How much do Republicans actually do for their constituents? Well, Democratic Representative Jared Moskowitz breaks it down for us. It's a little awkward uh, when you want to disagree with someone on your on your side of the aisle, but I have to dramatically disagree with my colleague, Ms. Crockett, who used data and statistics and facts to claim that this is the least productive Congress uh, in modern history. First of all, this Congress removed the speaker, okay, which has never happened in the history of the Republic. That's clearly uh, some, that's a big accomplishment. Uh, in the 118th. Th this Congress took 15 rounds to even elect that speaker that they then removed, right, which was historic in its, in its own right. A and then they removed a member of their own party. That hadn't happened in, in 20 years, so kudos to them. Uh, they've had a failed impeachment of a president. I don't think we've seen that happen in a really long time. Uh, this Congress did impeach a cabinet secretary, though, without meeting any constitutional threshold. We haven't seen that happen in 150 years. Uh, this Congress wants to hold Merrick Garland in contempt and then possibly arrest him. Um, I, I don't think we've ever seen that in the history of the Republic. We've seen a failed motion to vacate to remove a second speaker. Again, history in the 118th. Uh, and who could forget that this Congress, on behalf of the American people, saved gas stoves and ovens and toasters and blenders and dishwashers from the communist grip of energy standards. So I think Ms. Crockett was pointing out that this is least productive. These seem to be accomplishments on behalf of the American people that are clearly historic and may never be repeated uh, in, in another Congress. So pretty succinct summary there. Of course, Republicans claim that everything they do is actually done to protect and serve the American people, protect them from gay and transgender people, from Muslims and atheists and Satan worshipers, from socialists and communists, from lazy workers and union organizers, from vaccines, from someone else's abortion, from the illegals. All very real things, according to the Republicans, that Americans should always vigilantly stand against. But we know that most of what they actually do is obstruct progress in the United States, whether at the federal, state, or local levels, and they create and exacerbate culture wars with the express intention of radicalizing and siloing their base. They're chaos agents who at times are so chaotic that it's difficult to understand why they're doing or saying the things that they're doing or saying. Some recent examples are Lauren Boebert taking credit for something good that she voted against, and then more recently there was Tom Meet Tuberville defending Putin's invasion of Ukraine. He doesn't want Ukraine. He doesn't want Europe. Hell, he, he's got enough land of his own. Uh, he just wants to make sure that he does not have United States weapons in Ukraine pointing at Moscow. Also back in February, the Republicans, including Mitch McConnell, killed an immigration and Ukrainian aid bill. Mitch McConnell had developed and backed the bill, but he himself ultimately voted against it. But with such a strange and unimpressive track record, why do people still support the Republican Party? And I'm not talking about the wealthy Americans or business people who vote for the tax benefits. I'm talking about real, everyday, working class Americans. Part of the reason it could be argued, is because the Democrats are really, really bad at messaging. We're currently facing a presidential election that sees two very unpopular and very elderly presidential candidates gunning for the White House. Again, we've been here before. It was dumb the first time. It's even more dumb the second time around. Trump is now a convicted felon several times over, and Biden is caught in a situation where he will inevitably lose a significant chunk of his supporters depending on how he deals or doesn't deal with Israel. But apart from that, everyday things, grocery store prices are out of control. I spent $70 yesterday at the grocery store just on some quick essentials, eggs, bread, some fruit, trash bags, $70. Highly skilled and educated workers now live under constant threat of being laid off from profitable and growing companies. The housing market is still a disaster with many Americans giving up on the dream of ever owning their own property. And millions of people who would love to be starting a family or buying a house or setting up for retirement, they find themselves locked into predatory student loan agreements, unable to escape the cycle of bureaucracy, low wages, high prices, and utter instability. Why would anyone want to start a family or do anything when there's more than a good chance that they'll just be laid 
laid off one day without any kind of safety net? Why would a woman want to get pregnant in a red state when it could cost her her actual life? Things are grim for everyday Americans, and with the grim realities of everyday life, we're told to appreciate the things we do have because it's worse somewhere else. However, for many Americans, while we can understand that very simple dichotomy, there is little hope of things ever getting better. We feel stuck between two parties that don't do anything or don't do enough. While the Republicans are busy trying to impeach a president who hasn't done anything impeachable, and while they're still fighting with their own Speaker of the House, the Democrats have actually been working. They've been doing things, they just don't talk about it, or they don't talk about it nearly enough. And now is the time for them to talk about those things, if not in an election year, then when? Let's take food prices, for example. Earlier this year, the Biden administration blocked a major grocery merger where Kroger was seeking to acquire Albertsons. That merger would have resulted in a giant grocery monopoly that would affect millions of Americans across the entire country. During the pandemic, when there were grocery supply chain issues, prices inevitably shot up, but grocery stores had trouble keeping their shelves stocked. And part of the reason for that was because of the already existing industry monopolization. That was a very real thing that affected everyday Americans, and the Biden administration seems to be taking antitrust steps to prevent similar situations from happening in the future. The Democrats are also currently tackling inflated food prices, specifically food prices that never readjusted downward after the pandemic. The Democrats have been running a corporate pressure campaign against food giants like Target, and recent announcements that Target and others would be lowering food prices could be seen as a victory for the Democrats. Democrats are calling on the president to do even more than he has done in this regard, so perhaps maybe things will get better and continue to improve from here. There's also the student debt issue. A recent poll found that Americans are pretty well split on whether or not they approve of the way President Biden has handled the student debt crisis, which was an issue that he campaigned on. He certainly hasn't done as much as many people think he could have done by now, and as far as perceptions go, the debt is still a very real and very crippling reality for many working adults. One responded to the poll said that she does not approve of Biden's handling of the debt because her debt was never forgiven. She sees this as a broken campaign promise, so she feels as though her trust was violated. But is that entirely Biden's fault or even the Democrats? Not really. Republicans sued to block Biden's new student loan repayment plan. His earlier attempt at student loan forgiveness was shut down by the conservative-leaning Supreme Court. Another respondent to the poll acknowledged that the Biden administration has made significant attempts to deliver on the campaign promise and recognized that the Supreme Court was to blame for killing the proposal. The difference between the two respondents I mentioned was understanding and perception. The Democrats need to manage people's perceptions of them. Biden needs to manage people's perceptions of him. It's not our responsibility as voters to convince ourselves to like either of these candidates or parties. It's not our job to worry about the things that we have elected people to worry about for us. If the Dems want more of a reputation for actually doing things for their constituents, they should tell us about the things that they're actually doing. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much.